I am not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. Hi. Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Elise, and today we are going to be talking about Ilya. This is the Ilya guide. I'll be evaluating Ilya as a character and going through a couple of different team comps that she actually features in. I know a lot of you are very excited to get to use her in PvP, and this will hopefully help you with that. Hopefully, with your five star Ilyas, you'll be able to hit those first time rank one rewards for both BA and PA. If not, then I don't think anything can save you except this video. So just keep watching, and you guys should learn something. All right, without further ado, let's get into Ilya herself so you can see that she is a vampire. I'm not sure if that was exactly the most helpful evaluation of Ilya but let's move on to her skills. All right for her union burst vermilion bite this inflicts magic damage to all enemies within range so this is actually a pretty interesting skill because it selects the nearest enemy so say like the front most enemy is a Miyako and then it does damage to the characters that are 250 range within Miyako. So that's pretty cool you can kind of like see where this is heading right. If you can't well we'll get into it very soon. The other key thing about the UV is that it recovers HP. As we get into the next skills, you'll see why this is very, very important. So next we've got the skill one, which is Bleeding Blast. So she gets a magic attack boost, and then she does damage, magical damage to the enemy in front. However, this skill costs some HP. So you can see how there's kind of like a relationship now, right? She expends her HP to juice herself up and do damage, and then she recovers HP via her UB. If we actually move on to skill two, the Bloody Spear, it is kind of the same thing. It inflicts magic damage to all enemies within range and cost some HP. So the way that this one works is similar to Ninon and Reno. It's that if there are characters within her range, like so Ilya, 600 range apart and everything that's in between Ilya and 600 range that gets hit. So again like I said this skill costs HP as well as skill 1 and this uh, is a big reason as to why you need a 5 star Ilya. The EX skill is just large increase to magic damage or magic attack which is good because the healing is actually also based on magic attack. Magic attack is only good and you've got that from the bond level bonus as well and that's evaluation done almost. So let's talk about the attack pattern. So we've got a skill 1 going into a skill 2 and if you remember back to when we were talking about the skills which was like 30 seconds ago these both actually cost hp and so by the time you've already used these skills and then you go into the loop pattern and then use those two skills again Ilya is pretty much dead on top of the fact that when she hurts herself so it's costing the hp this can actually crit it is for these reasons that she actually needs to be five stars and have some level of support before she can actually be usable so no you can't just throw Ilya into any comp even if she's five star and just pray for her to work so Ilya's own internal source of healing is actually from her union burst, right? So can you kind of see where I'm going with this? If you can manage to speed up the union burst, <laughs> batteries, <laughs> then she will be able to self-sustain herself for a quite a long time. The five stars is to add insurance because like, you know, this is all accounting for if she doesn't get hit. Actually, you know what? I missed something very crucial and that is she is a midline character. She actually stands right next to Saren. So this means that a lot of the AoE characters can actually hit her. So I'm talking the Renos, the Ninon. So these are actually some of the counters to Ilya. All right, with that being said, let's actually get into some comps. So what we've got here are the arena comps. You know what? I'm going to take two minutes to add the CB comp into this. All right, here we go. And I've added the clan battle comp. All right, so this is kind of like a worksheet that I put together, kind of just some like uh, a quick summary of Ilya and how to really use her. So let's start with the Ilya core, okay? So the real core to Ilya is Saren. She is her partner in crime. You can see here that Ilya's distance from Saren is actually negative five. And that is like, that is really freaking close. This pretty much guarantees that Ilya is always going to be getting the TP boost from Saren. If you guys don't remember, Saren boosts the character that is the closest to herself. And in this case, it's going to be Ilya. So this is going to help Ilya actually get her UB off a lot more often. And hopefully that means that she is going to stay alive. Staying alive. Next, we've got Yukari, which is another really interesting one. So you need to manipulate the position if you're going to use Yukari. If you guys remember this chart from the battery guide, I think we're going to take Yukari in the second position and then we're going to have Kyoka occupy the fourth position. So that means that we need to put a middle character here or here or something like that, right? That kind of forms the basis of one of our comps, but we'll get into that very soon. The other good thing about Yukari is that Yukari heals and we know that Ilya needs the healing. There's just crazy synergies from Yukari. Everything she can provide, Ilya can take. Then I've just got this spot called healing because Ilya just needs some level of healing, right? A lot of the time, this could be the Maho, the Jun, the uh, Nozomi, like, you know, characters like that, Shizuru, all of these kind of characters that have the targeted heals, they will be hitting Ilya with the heals because Ilya 
Sarah will be constantly trying to kill herself. All right, let's get into some actual comps themselves. So first we've got the dual TP battery. So we've got the Saren and the Yukari. So as we remember, if Yukari is in the second position and there is a middle character behind Yukari somewhere, then the fourth position gets the TP buff. In this case, it's Ilya. We have a middle position of Monica. This thing is gonna go and blow some things up. Not only is Ilya getting the double TP, she's also got Monica to actually speed up her actions as well as give her the big juicer buff. To wrap it all up, all you need is to make sure that you're using an appropriate tank. So if you're versing like kind of magic damage, obviously Kuka. If you're versing physical damage, Miyako. If you're looking for a bit of heals, you got Jun and Nozomi, but like I think you guys get the point. At the end of the day, there needs to be a front line to keep your team from getting roasted by the other team. All right, so you can see the sheer amount of damage that this comp actually provides because of all of this, right? So however, there is one big weakness that you can see, and that is that Ilya is the only source of damage. I've played some comps like this before. I played like a Tamaki battery where Tamaki was the only one that was doing damage. It was pretty funny because Tamaki was like flying off and killing mages like no tomorrow, but the moment she died, like, you know, it was over. It was freaking game over. But yeah, the idea is that you go so fast that they don't even have enough time to kill you earlier before you can do anything. So with this comp, hopefully you can burst down the frontline ASAP. So you've got the skill two, which provides an AOE as well as the UB with another AOE. After the frontline has been bombed down by Ilya, she will then proceed to keep going and mowing them down. And that essentially is the idea of dual TP battery. Let's move on to single TP battery. And this is kind of like a very similar idea to the first one. However, this introduces a range DPS. I, I suppose you don't always have to take a range DPS, but like if you're using magic, like you might as well use more magic. So a lot of the time, what that means is that this spot is either occupied by like Hatsune or like um, Kyoka. Sometimes if you do need some physical, it could be Arisa, it could be the Shiori. But as you can see, what we are doing is we are adding another threat to our comp. So if Ilya dies, then it's kind of okay. There is still a chance for us because if Ilya is able to mow down the front line, we can still have that some level of consistency of attack from the back line. I've said two tanks here, but really if you're ballsy, you could just take one tank and you could take another DPS over here. As long as it doesn't disrupt this, like honestly, like negative five distance, it I don't think anyone can disrupt that. This is like one true pair kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, the idea of the double tanks is that you're probably going to be facing like some higher threat teams if you're going to be using this. So for example, over here, we've got an Ilya and a Ninon comp, right? That, that's, I'd be kind of scared of that. So it's for that kind of reason that I would take two tanks for that one. So I hope you guys get the idea of this one. All right, thirdly, which is a fun one. We've got the Lima and Ilya squad. So it's the same, same. We've got the Ilya, we've got the Saren, it's the core. But what we do have also is Lima. So the Lima, what it does, if you guys don't remember, is that Lima enters the battlefield later, okay? And what that does is like, imagine this is like, uh, this is the arena, right? So both teams, like they come to meet in the center, right? If Lima comes later, that means that the frontmost unit is now Yukari, who is standing further back. So what it kind of looks like is like, like this, right? So the enemy team is actually dragged towards you. And if you guys remember Ilya's skill two, she attacks front units within 600 range. So by dragging those units closer towards Ilya, that means that Ilya is going to be attacking a lot more of them. It's a very similar concept to the Ninon and Reno comp. It's dragging them towards them so that they can unleash the big AOE. Yukari here is optional, but like there is no other source of healing. So I'd be kind of nervous without her. But yeah, as you can see here, the idea is to boost the Ilya range to target the midline unit. Units. With Lima, it is possible to hit a lot of the midline units. So if you know, like you can see the comp with like the Mitskis or the Sarens or like potentially Ninon and then everyone else is like up the front, you got the Karis, you got the Makotos and all that. They're all about to get fried. This is probably a comp that I would consider. Maybe I'll take another tank in there instead of a ranged DPS. But yeah, that's kind of like three example comps that I would potentially run and like kind of the ideas behind it. Hopefully by running through each of these, you guys kind of get the ideas behind them and like can build your own comps. Fortunately, the guys over in the China server, they've already done all the work for us. So this is actually a rock, paper, scissors chart. To read this, all it's saying is like you use the left comp to beat the right comp. I've actually prepared a very detailed translation of what that Chinese says. So let's have a look at it. So the first one is that it's too easy to tear down a cat. There's not much to talk about. All right, guys, I know that sounds kind of lewd, but really it's just killing off the Tamaki. So after the first comp, the second section is how to tear Ilya apart. So effectively it's saying if there's an Ilya on defense, what do you do? And these are all of the comps. And then the last one, is removing the cat fan, which is the Tamaki and Ninon variations of the stalls. All right, if I hop back over here, you can see like, you know, oh, it's Chinese again. But yeah, this is just a quick compilation. If you need a little bit more reference, I would head over to PCRD fans. For you guys who don't know, PCRDfans.com or 
whatever. It's like the arena database. Essentially, you enter an enemy's comp and it will provide you with a counter. It's going to be a lot of new comps coming out, so I guess keep your eye on it. I have added a warning here, and it's that this chart does not specify stars nor gears. As we all know by now, your stars and your gears will definitely affect how your team performs. For example, one of my comps against the Tamaki Soul these days, like it does not work against like 25 stars or like 20 stars or like a four star Tamaki. It's like really freaking specific and it's really annoying. Same kind of logic applies here just because like, you know, you see it on the left side. It doesn't mean it'll always be the right one. According to the Chinese, it probably will, but don't sue me if it doesn't, okay? All right, the last thing I want to talk about is Ilya's participation in clan battle. So typically Ilya's role is to actually be a tank or be another DPS in the mage comp. So now that we have Kyoka and Ilya and we can combine them with Akari and Kiaru and a tank, we now have a magical clan battle comp. There are definitely some compositions where you can run these four characters plus Misato. For you guys who don't know, Misato is the new two-star healer that also buffs magic attack. You can see that she is the perfect fit for this comp. However, if you do use Misato, what ends up happening is that Ilya will become the tank. For Ilya to tank, she needs to be five stars. We already know why. She's like constantly trying to kill herself and then we've got the boss trying to kill her. Like, you know, we've got to freaking save her somehow and that's Misato. Misato is the answer. On the other hand, what we could also do is actually use a different tank. So I put a tank here, but really what it means is face tank. And what I mean by face tank is like not your traditional tanks like your Kukas or like your Miyakos. Obviously, if you're not like at max cap and stuff, like you could definitely consider using those kinds of characters. However, the real intent behind this one is to use like a Kaori face tank or to use like a Jita face tank or to use like a physical DPS face tank that can actually lifesteal so that it can sustain enough to deal damage while surviving the boss. You guys already know, clan battle is all about the damage. The less tanks that we can use, the better. So I would really recommend looking it up. I think Tamaki 5 star is another viable tank here. But yeah, I think that's essentially it for the Ilya stuff, uh, which means I've kind of like finished this video, actually. There's a lot that's happening. The arena is about to get shaken up. It's uh, it's kind of like, uh, I'm kind of happy about it, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be pulling for Ilya. And even if I do get Ilya, I'm not going to 5 star her. And that is probably like one of the key points that you need to remember. You need the 5 star Ilya for it to really, really work. If you are willing to make that investment, then it should pay dividends. So for example, if you're only at like the highest you've reached is like 500 and BA and 500 and PA. With Ilya, theoretically, you should be able to hit rank one in both of them. Just you probably won't be able to hold them because another guy with Ilya is going to come up and slap your Ilya comp and it's it's just going to be brutal. These next few months are just going to be very, very brutal. Like you guys need to like get some counters out for these guys. Like I said, some potential counters, Ninon, Reno, it's the AoE guys, got the Shizurus, we've got the Mitsukis. From a tanking point of view, obviously you've got Kuka because she is the premier magic tank. Miyako will melt in the face of Ilya and funnily enough, Nozomi 5 is not that strong against her. It's actually Jun whose EX skill gives her magic defense that is actually second best tank against Ilya. So remember that because it might come in handy. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up the video for real here. I think we've gone enough into this. I can probably go on and on and on, but by then, like we'll probably have like the meta figured out in like two hours. All right, guys, I got a secret message for you guys. Arena is about to become a circus. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really, really appreciate it. It means that you've made it to the end of the video and I really appreciate that. It takes a lot of time, especially doing the research, pulling all of this stuff together, right? All right, with that out of the way, hopefully this video has helped you. If it has, then consider liking, subscribing, pinning, following. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.